Welcome back. Tom, we hardly got to know you. Redistricting only recently made Tom Rooney congressman in the, to the Suncoast residents living south of Clark Road. So no long goodbyes for Tom. More interesting, who's replacing you? Will it be State Senator Greg Stubbe bring his, bringing his cowboy hat and his love for filing legislation expanding where you could bring a gun to Washington? Or will it be state representative slash, slash orthopedic surgeon slash attorney Julio Gonzalez? Or can the big blue way we keep on hearing about turn the 17th congressional district from red to blue? And joining us for more are Frank Alcock, political science professor at New College, Martin Hyde, a former candidate for Sarasota City Commission, and Kathy Antunis, host of The Detail on WSRQ Radio. And no offense to Tom Rooney, I know he has his in-laws who live in Venice, Frank, but we recently only got Tom Rooney as our congressman. This is a congressional district that has over time shifted from West Palm Beach all the way to here. So it's I, the strangest congressional district in Florida. Wow. I think it, in nine different counties. And so it, the, the amount of space that uh, that is covered is enormous. Um, but the, the population gravity, I think, with the changes are still in southern half of Sarasota County. We've got a lot of people here and uh, and I think our, our the candidates that hail from uh, this part of the district have a leg up, I think. But well, you know, he, uh, Tom Rooney uh, called Okeechobee home, but in reality, as his district director often told me, Tom Rooney lived in, Flo in, uh, in Washington, D.C. with his wife and kids. So um, it's not that we're losing a, a local personality here, but the question, uh, Kathy and Martin, is who is, is, uh, is best able to uh, get support in this district going out all the way to Okeechobee? And, and Martin, who do you think would have the advantage there? Oh, I think the advantage is clearly with uh, Greg Stubbe. Uh, he's got an agricultural background. He's been in the Senate. Um, his father um, was uh, chief law enforcement in Manatee County. Um, I think he's got more name recognition. And you rightly said, I mean, a significant part of the, uh, the, pe the percentage of people that are going to vote are going to be in Charlotte and Sarasota counties. Uh, these other counties, the more rural ones, uh, tend to be more conservative, and obviously that's going to favor him. They tend to be more conservative, uh, Kathy, and Julio Gonzalez fits that bill, and he is a big man down uh, in, in South County. I mean, he is, you know, he is one of the biggest political names down there. Yeah, well, I think it's going to be an, an interesting race. I do, I, I have to agree with Martin and my take in terms of the Republican we side could be. Right now. I know. Yeah, I'm agreeing right. with Martin. That's right. He's, he's <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> I do think that that Stubbe has a bit of a leg up, but you know, there's there's this unknown factor with the blue wave and. Um, you see the energy of the indivisible well, folks. Well, so. Frank, I mean, a lot of Democrats look at the House 72 race and the, the number of Republican women who crossed over and voted for Margaret Good, and they are wondering tonight whether that can apply to a district like the 17th Congressional District. I think it can. Uh, it's just that it's a higher bar. Uh, so you're looking at a district that Trump won by 27 points. Um, uh, if you're looking at a district that's uh, closer to single digits or uh, 10 or, or 15, that becomes potentially very uh, competitive. This one, it, it has a higher bar. Uh, but I do think the wave is, you're going to see it everywhere. Um, and so there's going to be a boost. There'll be a wind at the back of the Democratic uh, candidate. It is a conservative district. And you just don't know what's going to happen, what rev revelations <laughs> will come up uh, at, at the end of the campaign. And so uh, you know, it's important, I think, for the Democrats to run as strong a candidate out there as they possibly revelations can. Revelations meaning what? It, it, we just never you, ne you never know. You know, you just you don't know what's going to happen in terms of what pops up with particular uh, candidates. I'm not saying anything about, about the candidates. But I'm no. just saying, you know, right. this, much of this area uh, actually uh, was an area that uh, when it was the 16th district in Tom, uh, Foley, um, uh, had it there were the sort of the sexual misconduct with the, the pages up in Washington and he lost it to, uh, to a Democrat uh, in, a, in a close race and then Negron won it sh shortly after that but you never know what's going to happen all right we have to take a quick break we are just getting warmed up we'll have much more on the 17th congressional district right after we check the first alert weather so stay with us Welcome back. We're talking about the race for Congress in the 17th Congressional District and the dominoes in the State House and the Senate races. Joining us for more are Frank Alcock, political science professor at New College, Martin Hyde, a former candidate for Sarasota City Commission, and Kathy Antunis, host of The Detail on WSRQ Radio. Uh, Kathy, mm -hmm. let me ask you this. Uh, especially after Parkland, there's been so much energy amongst young people and uh, 
many folks involving the gun issue. Yeah. Does the gun issue play in any sort of way in the 17th Congressional District, also taking into account um, how aggressive Greg Stubbe has been on the state level in terms of trying to expand gun rights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think when you look at the configuration of this particular district, we're talking, you know, south of I-4 corridor, middle of the state. I don't know that, that the gun issue in terms of, um, you know, improved enhanced safety, maybe it will, but that does seem to me to be um, a more rural, conservative area. For my money, I, I mean, I think there are conservatives out there who support sane gun legislation, and but but I think there's also room for an economic message, because the people that have been swayed by our president's you know campaign promises, in terms of um, keeping Medicare safe, you know, improving their lives, we've seen moderate Democrats, or someone like Connor Lamb. Who, who is a conservative Democrat, a fiscal conservative, but who wants to protect these um, programs that make people's lives better. You know, I don't know if people under Trump who voted for him are doing better, and if we get conservative Democratic candidates who make that message, because there's we, opportunity. We are already hearing talk in Washington in terms of doing something about entitlements, that means Social Security and Medicare, this district may be very Republican, but it's also very white and very older, Martin. So it, does that give you as a Republican pause that, uh, that since there are so many things going on right now in the country in terms of, of the explosiveness of our, our politics at the federal level, that um, maybe Republicans shouldn't take this congressional district for granted? I think it'd be a mistake to do it. I looked at the numbers earlier. There's 57,000 more registered Republicans in this district, but there are 109,000 NPAs. Um, that's, if one was looking for an opportunity, that's where it is. Uh, America is more in the middle, perhaps, than people would imagine. The rural areas, yeah, I don't think you're going to be able to get in there and talk about taking people's guns. Um, but the question is, really, whether a blue wave is a blue tsunami. Um, midterms, I looked at those those numbers, yeah, Obama lost 63 net, Clinton lost 52, FDR lost 72, um, Ford and Eisenhower both 48, Harding and Hoover 77 and 52. There can be massive swings. And, and so um, I wouldn't be sitting pretty if I was anyone. I'd be out there and make sure that you campaign on your core issues. So Frank, we know that the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee is targeting the, targeting the, the 16th Congressional District. That's a Vernon Buchanan, but you have not heard much. Uh, in the weeks since uh, Congressman Rooney made his announcement about uh, the National Democrats really sniffing very seriously at the 17th. I, I haven't heard anything to date. Um, uh, April Freeman's running again. She's somebody that I actually got to know a, a lot because the Senate district that I ran for overlaps uh, with that. And you know, she's a good candidate. There might be others uh, that come in. I, I, I think. I, I agree. I'm not sure that the candidate, the optimal candidate, would look like Connor Lamb, but I do think uh, if a Democrat is going to be viable, um, then they're going to have to make the case that um, what affects people's lives in that district, they're going to be the better person uh, to represent them. And there could be a lot that happens uh, in the next year uh, or the next six to eight months within a Trump presidency that opens the door to a Democrat making that case. So I, I wouldn't take anything for granted and I wouldn't rule anything eight, out. Eight or nine months in politics is a lifetime as we have learned over and over again. Of course, uh, Tom Rooney's departure and the open seats has really created a domino effect here. You have people like uh, Greg Stubbe and Julio Gonzalez now running for that seat, which opens their seats in the state Senate and uh, the state house. One interesting thing, Martin, you probably want to talk about is the fact that uh, one of the Republicans running for uh, Julio Gonzalez's House seat is James Buchanan, who just ran and lost here in House 72, the son of Vern. Well, you know, when opportunity knocks, I kidded with James the other day. I said, you know, no point in buying a house, just get a caravan and keep moving <laughs> south. But, um, you know, yeah. joking aside, you can never tell when these opportunities uh, might come up. He obviously wants to stay in the game. He obviously feels that's a, uh, a winning position. I would say one thing, and, and it's not partisan at all. I have a little bit of a concern or a little bit of a doubt as a voter and as a citizen about, I understand what congressman's job is to become a senator, a senator's job to become 
Vietnam president, but I'm a little bit frustrated with people that took an office to uh, ran a campaign, and then the minute something else better opened up, uh, said, we'll see you later. Um, well, I, I'm frustrated with uh, that. All right. So therefore, you were talking about Greg Stubbe, Julio Gonzalez, mm -hmm. Joe Gruders, uh, anybody else? And I'm, or I'm anybody else. It's got, that's got nothing to do with whether you're a conservative or whether you're a liberal. Um, if you take it on, if you take people's votes, I think you're entitled to see the thing out. Uh, Kathy, Julio Gonzalez's seat that James Buchanan is running for is a reliably Republican mm -hmm. seat here. Mm -hmm. uh, I know in, in my own experience that, that the national parties, they say their research does not show that carpetbagging really in the end has an impact on, on how people vote. But you're on the radio yeah. every day. What are people saying to you in terms of Buchanan? If you remember, he started yeah. off running for the state senate. He mm -hmm. switched to House 72. Now this House seat. What are folks saying? It doesn't. It doesn't look good. You know, it's it's like, okay, where where do you live? You know, and the rules may permit what he's doing. They, they in fact do. In fact. You know, I've heard people saying, well, the rules need to change. This is ridiculous. Um, but, you know, the reality is if it's a reliably Republican seat, it, it may well be that, you know, he'll, he'll just get that vote. I, I would hope that there are other Republicans running. It, it just seems to me there's a sense of entitlement that turns people off. You know, he, he has a last name that we all know. And um, a lot of money. And, well, but he only reported $23,000 worth of income, which is another strange uh, dichotomy. So you're a millionaire, but your annual income is twenty-three grand. You know, you don't live in the district. Well, what's going on? There's just, I, th I think to Martin's point, people in a different vein, people want to see a commitment. And if you don't even live in the place you're running for, it just doesn't look good. You are the political scientist. Uh, as much as I, I, I concur uh, w with my fellow panelists, we're, we're living in an era, uh, l like it or not, where um, as much as we would like um, uh, citizens in a certain area to select their representative, it, it tends to be the powerful and influential folks that get to choose the districts uh, that they represent as opposed to vice versa. Martin, do you, do you think that you know, whoever wins the Republican primary in that district, and I believe it's the vice mayor of uh, it's either Northport or Venice, who, who are, who's running for that, she is not going to have the same amount of resources and money that James Buchanan has. Oh, as I understand it, James has a fair bit of money over. It's interesting that you can carry it over. He carried it over from 71 to 72, and now he's able to take whatever he's got left over to 74. Um, as far as, you know, it isn't fair. And I found that you know, in the last couple of years. Uh, the reality is that um, unless you're a favored candidate, unless you have access to, uh, to the big names, when uh, they came up with uh, the congressional uh, race there and uh, Greg put his name in, the day he put his name in, he had endorsements from everybody up and down the state. Um, that's just not open to your average guy standing on a soapbox. Uh, this is a rigged game on both sides. We have less than a minute left, Kathy, but do you think that there are, are more more shoes to drop in this domino effect of, of the races here? Well, I do think that to the extent that, that people make an economic case, the Democratic Party, if they've got game, I would love to see them take on some of these issues that, that are in people's lives, affecting them. You know, what's going to happen to Social Security, to Medicare? Who's really going to make sure that your quality of life improves. They haven't done that, to, in, my, in my view. They have, they have to get better at doing that because the people, the swing voters who, who went for President Trump, I don't know that their lives are really any better. Okay, we will have to leave it there. But before we go, we want to share with you what some of you had to say about last night's show. On the March for Our Lives, the march took place over the weekend with nearly 8,000 people coming out in Sarasota and 3,000 in Bradenton. They include students, educators, and parents who were voicing their opinions on gun control and school safety. Gilbert says, I would never march in an organized protest that directly opposes our constitutional rights and freedom. This is the first time I have ever heard of Americans demanding that our own rights be taken away. Margaret responds, which rights? The rights to free speech, the right of a well-organized militia to bear arms, or our right to assemble peacefully and not be in fear of being shot by some lunatic using military-grade weaponry? 
Well, if you'd like to join the conversation on tonight's topic, just visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash mysuncoast.com.abc7. And FYI, you can watch past discussions on demand. They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. And for the latest on local breaking news, don't forget to download the updated version of our app. If your old app doesn't work, it's expired. Just go to the App Store and re-download it by searching for WWSB or My Sun Coast. We want to thank our guests for being here tonight. Frank Alcock is a political science professor at New College. Martin Hyde, a former candidate for Sarasota City Commission. And Kathy Antunis, host of The Detail on WSRQ Radio.